Hey folks, Hal Shirtliff with Camp Constitution here, and I'm with my brother from another mother, Reverend Stevie Kraft. How are you doing, Rev? I'm blessed and highly favored here on the Lord's Day, uh, January 3rd, the first Sunday in the first month of a new year, 2021. And we are here in beautiful downtown Lexington, just a very short distance from the, oh, you can't see the green from here, but we're just about a block away from the Lexington Green. The shot heard around the world. And we are now, as you can see, standing in front of the Lexington Historical Society. And uh, you see a, a, something under the sign that says Black Lives Matter. Now, I was here last week um, and took, taking a, making a, running a few errands, and I noticed this. I didn't notice it before, but it may have been up here for a while. And it was a little disturbing because the folks at Black Lives Matter hate American history, hate the history of Lexington and basically hate America, hate Western civilization, yet groups like uh, Lexington Historical <laughs> Society think they have to fly this banner. So I went on to their website and got the email addresses of the various uh, officials here. And I sent them, my email basically said that, um, that this, your organization is a very fine organization. You did a great job highlighting the contributions and sacrifices made by black Americans in the War, war for Independence, etc. And I said, you do not need to virtual signal, you know, and, and I mentioned that Black Lives Matter is an anti-American Marxist organization that would happily tear down the statues and monuments here in Lexington. I got a response from the director, Aaron, who probably is a very well-intentioned person, a uh, person who probably was, went to left-wing schools and had this perspective. Her response was a little interesting, though. She said that back in June, this would be June of 2020, uh, because of the events that were happening, yeah, riots all over the country, that they decided, they made a pledge to be anti-racist and to fight white privilege and white supremacy. And it looked like it was within the group itself. And I'm thinking, wait a minute now, there's, where's the white supremacy? I mean, I don't see any Klan rallies here. <laughs> almost, it was almost ridiculous. But it was, to me, a Marxist response. And I don't think she even knew it, that we have to self-examine and self-criticize us and denounce our white privilege and white supremacy. So, uh, and then she continued, and by the way, I'll put the correspondence in the, in the link here below in the comments section, uh, so you have an understanding. I didn't want to read it verbatim. So I responded a little facetiously saying that I was surprised to learn, well, I was surprised to learn that there was white supremacy, white privilege, and racism amongst historical society, I'm not surprised that many pro white progressives are racist, and I was, I'd said even living in Lexington itself with a po black population of 1.5% is an indication of one's racism, white supremacy, and white privilege. And then I pointed out some of the crimes committed by Black Lives Matter members, including the president, the Boston chapter leader, Monica Cannon Grant and her racist barrage against a friend of ours, a black woman, Rayla Campbell, married to a white man with interracial children. The things she said to Rayla, I can't repeat here, because I'm a Christian gentleman. And also, just recently, in the town of Swampscott, Massachusetts, another Black Lives Matter, a, a male, who was honored by the Boston Red Sox this past June or July, uh, assaulted an 80-year-old woman. And then I also posted a video of B.B. Reed, <laughs> And I'll put a posting here. BB uh, was here at Lexington Green back in September, where a, a black woman from Harlem, and she confronted, politely confronted, about six white women who had Black Lives Matter banners on there. And um, anyway, I said, "Will the Lexington Historical Society denounce the the uh, cr the violence of Black Lives Matter?" I have not heard back. But Rev, I want your take on the subject because, uh, as it looks like you're a black man, so <laughs> I've been black for 77 years, and I don't believe I'll turn white anytime soon. And may I add, you've been doing a very good job of it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. First of all, the historical society supposedly must understand true history from revised false history, and taking that perspective, I'm going to assume that the Lexington Historical Society really knows the true motives and the true agenda of the movement Black Lives Matter. That Black Lives Matter, number one, does not really believe that Black Lives Matter because as a black man who loves America and who is a conservative constitutionalist clergyman, 
I take great issue with the Marxist organization Black Lives Matter, number one. Number two, blacks, according to Bill Ayers, who was the co-founder of the Weather Underground of the 70s, may, and he is a white man, a white communist that's now a professor, him and his wife Bernadine Dorm, he made these comments. He said, blacks can be used for the revolution, but blacks can also be sacrificed as part of the revolution as well. Indeed, like the Muslims, they, speaking of blacks, are cannon fodder for the revolution. And then he comes back and says, kill all the w rich white people, break up their cars and their apartments, bring the revolution home, kill your parents. That's where it's really at. This Black Lives Matter organization has nothing to do with black lives because all lives matter, because all lives have been created in the image of God. Black Lives Matter is nothing more than an evolution from the Black uh, Liberation uh, Army to something more softer that can fool the people and call it now Black Lives Matter. The people here in Lexington, if they don't understand what they are subscribing to, must realize that if we support these kind of racist, black, racist, black supremacist organizations, there'll come a time that they won't have this beautiful town of Lexington whereby the revolution for liberty, the revolution for freedom started. There'll come a time where Black Lives Matter will come right up here in Lexington and destroy this beautiful town of Lexington, Massachusetts. So I highly say, Mr. Sherliff, I simply say this. The Historical Society of Lexington must ask themselves one serious question. Do they really believe that Black Lives Matter? Or are they only virtue signaling to think that they want to be a part of an organization that they don't have a clue what it's about? Because if they really believe in this organization, then one must ask themselves, how do they think that they can call themselves the Lexington Historical Society while at the same time ready to destroy the very thing that they claim to hold on to? Yeah, in my email, Rev, I pointed out that the Black Lives Matter members have been tearing statues down, not just Confederate statues, statues of Frederick Douglass, the uh, 54th Regiment statue in Boston across the street from the State House, which is not there, by the way. It's supposed to be being repaired or restored. Uh, that was vandalized. That, that highlighted the uh, incredible sacrifices made by the black patriots during the Civil War, the 54th Regiment. They made a movie about it called Glory. So they have no interest in history, American history. They want to destroy it. And it's hard to uphold an organization whose goal is to promote the history of Lexington, especially the Revolutionary War era, with an organization that wants to see it destroyed. A good, good, quite good point, Mr. Shirtlip. That's why when I see the banners of the Lexington Minutemen, I wonder if the Lexington Minutemen, if they were alive today, would go along with this foolishness, this Marxist communist ideology of Black Lives Matter. Because the Lexington Historical Society really needs to give an account of themselves to why they are promoting this evil uh, uh, agenda of Black Lives Matter. Surely they must understand history if they're the historical society. I have a problem in my mind of trying to, to wrap my brain around this concept because every time I talk to black people who claim to, to embrace Black Lives Matter and I ask them if black lives really believe that black lives matter, why are blacks killing one another? Why are blacks killing their unborn helpless children? Why are blacks selling drugs and committing crimes? And I'm saying this as a black man. And I, I would challenge any white person to challenge and to question my blackness mm. <laughs> concerning these issues. So Reverend Kraft, I am open for debate and discussion about these very important issues. I love this, this town. This town really embraced me as a black conservative based on the history of this town. But I don't understand why the Lexington Historical Society would embrace an ideology 
and a, uh, a wicked agenda that wants to destroy what they're supposed to be about. And what's interesting, too, is that uh, one of the patriots, so one of the uh, members of the Lexington militia that answered the alarm was a black man, at the time a slave, Prince Esther Brooks. Yes. Uh, Esther Brooke. And uh, they do a good job. They have a monument, uh, a little statue, to com a monument to commemorate his sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And when they do the reenactments, he's, uh, he has, there's a gentleman that does it, portrays him. He's been doing this for years. Uh, and I think it's something to be very proud of. He, uh, Prince Estabrook did eventually get his freedom, and uh, and they bring this out. Uh, so I don't know why again why they think they have to uh, virtue signal. I can't believe they really support the agenda. And uh, in the email, Aaron said that uh, thousands of Americans and organizations around the country support this. Well, that's a logical fallacy. The fallacy of composition. Just because a lot of people support something doesn't make it right. And I like to think because of efforts of, of our, what we do here to expose them and many other organizations, I think more and more people are realizing that maybe perhaps we don't really want to be this Black Lives Matter. But in some cases, they double down. And in some cases, when you do criticize it, uh, you're kicked out of school, you lose your job. That's not America. Or your business is boycotted or even they, they even get death threats. That's not America, folks. The First Amendment and the U.S. Constitution, as well as the Massachusetts State Constitution, and every constitution, every state, you have the right to free speech. And you have the right to criticize organizations, not slander or smear, but tell the truth. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. And to learn more about Camp Constitution, visit our website, campconstitution.net. Thank you, Reverend Kraft, for your time. Thank you for having me.